Hello, we are back and I'm at the dashboard level in my WordPress environment here. So the last time we went through posts, pages, and we went through a general overview, we also chose a theme so we can start theming our website. And today we're going to talk about something very, very important. And that very, very important thing is plugins. All right. So there are certain plugins that I want you to have on your website because they are going to help you do some pretty important things. For example, increase your search engine optimization results, your natural SEO, or your naturally, so that you can naturally rank higher in the search engines. Second, I want you to have a backup plugin because as we mentioned in tools, although you can export your WordPress pages, it is not going to export all of the excellent customizations you've made from your to your site. So what is a plugin? All right, a plugin adds functionality to your website. So let's go to the installed plugins that we already have. Right now we have a Kismet and I have not activated this plugin yet and I am going to just do so right now. So I'm going to go to, actually I have activated it. Um, so a Kismet will come with your site. It's a very important plugin because it stops people from spamming your site. And spamming your site, it's so it runs in the background and basically blocks spam. So let's go to the settings and we're going to get our API key. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and get my API key. I'm going to activate a Kismet. Okay, so I am going to enter my Dr. Lisa Sharp. Actually, let's see. Dr. Lisa Sharp. Lisa, is it Dr. Lisa Sharp Web Class? Yes, it's Dr. Lisa Sharp Web Class at gmail.com. So I'm going to enter that. Okay, I'm going to choose, choose a username. So I'm just going to choose Dr. Lisa Sharp and hopefully that isn't taken. It probably is. Yep, I have done this so many times that all of my usernames are taken. Uh, so we'll just say Dr. Lisa Sharp Web Class is my username. And my password. And I'm going to go ahead and continue. All right, so this plugin, we are, I'm going to go ahead and move to my, move to my website here sent me an, e an email. Activate Dr. Lisa Sharp web class. All right, let's do it. So I'm going to activate my account. And now I'm going to sign into a Kismet. Now, guess what? It wants us to pay. So the deal with plugins is some of them are free, some of them are upgradable, which means you can pay, you can use a free version and at some point if you want to pay to upgrade, you can. And some of them want your money right up front. So in this class, we're going for free. All right, guess what? A Kismet does not cost any money. So we're gonna add a personal subscription. How much is a Kismet worth to you? and it's asking me for a credit card. Ouch, we don't want that. So take a look at this. I'm just going to take this down to $0 a year. And notice um, I, I get a, a kind of a sad face. Let's see, how much money do I want to give a Kismet? If I want to give it $120 a year, it's happy to take my money, but I don't want to give a Kismet any money. It's still going to allow me to, it's still going to do the same nice job letting people, um, not letting people spam my site, but it's giving me kind of a frowny face. All right, well, that's fine. I'm going to create a, a, a subscription anyway. You guys are students. You don't need to pay for any money. All right. Okay, so now we need to, here's our API key. So I want everyone to activate a Kismet. 
So I am going to go back here and I have my API key. I'm going to paste it in and I'm going to go ahead and connect. All plugins set up a little differently. This is just one that I want you to I want you to have. Okay, so I have my API key. Akismet is now pretending my pre pretending protecting my site from spam. All right, so we have a couple of we have a, we have the free subscription, which is going to do exactly the same thing that a paid subscription would do. And I have comments and strictness. Now, if you remember when we set this up we pretty much disabled the ability of people to comment. And I have two choices. I can, Akismet can discard the spam so that I never have to see it, or it can put the spam in my folder to review. And it's deleted automatically, 15 days. I'm gonna leave it in there just in case someone emailed me and it really wasn't spam. So I'm gonna go ahead and save my changes. All right, fine. Now let's go back to plugins. So our installed plugins are is a Kismet. Now notice that it wants me to update this plugin. Plugins need to be updated. It'll WordPress will tell you. As you can see, I have a little number one next to plugins. WordPress will always tell you what needs to be updated, and I should keep those plugins updated. So I went ahead and clicked up, clicked update. Well, that was easy. All right. So now let's go to add new. Okay. So. What might I want? A lot of stuff. Um, last, as you can see, I was looking for a booking calendar last time. You can. There are a lot of plugins that do absolutely everything. And here's a plugin that I want you to have. And I'm just going to type in the words SEO. Okay. There are two plugins that are. We are not going to go over using this right now, but. I want you to install it. Uh, the, there's two of them that are wonderful. And here's, and I want to use this moment to discuss what SEO is, why we want it, and what makes an effective plugin. So let's start with what makes an effective plugin. All right, look at this. It has 21,000 reviews, five star reviews, 21,000 reviews, that's pretty good. One million active installations. Last updated two weeks ago, and it's compatible with my version of WordPress. Now, let's take a look at some other plugins. This is actually one that my a couple of my students swear by, Squirrely. People love Squirrely, and so there are there are. Here's another one. Uh, let's see, WP. Okay, so this is some of them will have excellent reviews but not many of them not many active installations and it's not that they're not trustworthy but I'd rather go with the big guns okay so for example we have here Yoast SEO search and search index purge um, we have SEO booster with 12 reviews and 2000 installations that might be a really great plugin, but I'm not going to risk it. I'm going to use Yoast SEO, and I want you to use it too. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and install that one. So again, this is actually going to add some functionality to your website once we start, and I'm going to go ahead and activate it, once we start actually putting content onto the site. But right now I'm just using it. See, look at that. It's already giving me it's already giving me a notification. So SEO or search engine optimization is something we're going to work on a little bit later. I just want you to have that installed now so that when we're ready to use it, you are ready to go. Okay, let's add a new plugin. The next thing we want is backup and restore. Okay, again, we want to find, now the, the, there are a lot of backup plugins. One of the ones that 
because that my students have gone have gotten if you use Dropbox this is a nice plugin all-in-one WP migration is one that I've used again there are no there's no perfect backup plugin but we need a backup plugin um, so we are going to choose one based on features okay so here's a good example of one that I don't think I would want to use nine reviews not that great 2000 active installations last updated nine months ago Amazon Web Services if you use Amazon to back up that's a nice one but the one that I really like is Updraft Plus so again I'm not going to tell you what backup plugin to use but I happen to like this one a million installations 2780 reviews the one disadvantage to this particular plugin is that it's going to want you to start paying for it after a certain level but nevertheless we're going to go ahead and install it and we're going to take a look at a plugin now so far the plugins that we have installed run in the background okay so I'm going to go ahead and activate it they run in the background they add functionality to our website so we have SEO, we have Backup Restore, and we have Anti-Spam. Very, very important stuff. So let's look at the settings for, we're not going to look at the SEO yet because we don't have enough content on our, on our website. So I'm going to look at the settings for that plugin. And we have some, op some options here. Backup Now. So Backup Now will make a backup of your entire site to the uh, server that you currently have. Um, it will also back up to just about anything. So for example, I'm going to go to settings here. So, so far we have manual backup schedule, database manual backup schedule, and these are all the places that you can back up to. You can back up to Dropbox, you can back up to Google Drive, and so that's, that's pretty nice and you could send a backup to your email except I guarantee you that that is going to be way too big for your email and what do we want in the backup we want all of our plugins our themes our uploads and anything else we want to have everything backed up remember WordPress's export function is limited it is going to back up just your pages your posts but it's not going to back up your themes it's not going to back up your plugins it's not going to back up your media your pictures photographs all of that stuff it is uh, actually a very disappointing feature and that's why we need a good backup plugin guys you must have a backup plugin you must so at this point I am going to back up to um, I haven't had a real good experience backing up to um, updraft plus vault they want money for that uh, you can back up to Dropbox if you want, if you use Dropbox a lot and you have enough room. You guys have unlimited space in Google Drive. Okay, so I can, I, I'm not going to go through all of the settings to back up to my Google Drive right now. We're going to use the simplest way to back up. So, simplest way to back up is to back up to your email server. Excuse me, not your email server, the server that, we're, that we are actually using WordPress on. So, our WordPress server, not our email server. All right, so I'm just going to hit backup now. Include the database in the backup, include any files in the backup. It has, we are going to back up to our WordPress database on the server that we are currently using. Okay, so it is in progress. Now, this is going to take a long time. And it's probably too long for the purposes of this video so what I'm gonna do is stop recording and then what we can do is after it's done 
we can go and just download it to our computer and we have our backup. Okay, so how often should we back up? I would suggest that when you're actively working, oh hey, it's done. Um, if, we're, if we're actively working on a WordPress site, you should probably back up every two to three days. And thereafter, you should back up every week or so. Guys, backup is important because if you don't back up, obviously you will lose all of the work that you've done. And backups are also important because uh, for security purposes, people can and will try to hack your site. So they will, they will try. In fact, I have been hacked before. It was not a fun experience. All of a sudden, all my WordPress sites were in Russian. That sucked. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and download it. It actually, actually, it's probably not finished backing up because we should have existing backups of, yeah, everything. There it is, existing backups, existing backups one. So what we want to do is we have the choices of upload backup files, rescan remote storage, but actually we just want to download everything. Okay, so I'm going to download the database. I'm going to download the plugins. I'm going to download the themes. I'm going to download the uploads. And I'm going to download everything else. So I'm going to download this to my computer, and it's going to go to my downloads folder. I have just backed up my WordPress site. Very important. So those plugins are extremely, extremely important. Now, let's do one more plugin before we uh, end this video. So as you can see, our SEO has uh, added a little bit to our toolbox here. So let's go back to plugins and we're going to add one more. We would like a contact form. I'm going to go ahead and add a new plugin and I'm going to look for a contact form. And again, we are this is a different type of plugin. So plugins, the plugins we have so far are adding functionality to our site while running in the background. So they're saving us from spam, they are helping us back up our site, but this one is going to be something visible on our website. So this one is Contact Form 7. Okay, so Contact Form 7 actually is not the recommended contact form for my particular theme, but I'm going to ask you to install it and I'm going to show you how it works. It's very easy and as you can see it's a good trustworthy plugin. I'm going to go ahead and install it. I'm going to activate it. And now we're going to go to settings. So this is a beautiful thing. This contact form, it automatically creates a contact form for us. This is called a short code. This short code is a type of it's generated by the plugin and short codes again add functionality to your WordPress website they look and work like HTML tags and this is going to give us a contact form in one click okay command C I'm going to copy that and now I'm going to go to my pages I'm going to look at all pages okay so let's take a let's take a look at the contact page which right now has no information on it all right, so let's go ahead and edit this page. And remember, we have our visual view and our text view. And I'm going to place contact form, the short code generated by our plugin, and update the page. Now let's take a look. We have a contact form. OK, so this, where is it going to go, you might ask? It's going to go to the email that you have specified in your, in your settings. So under general settings, let's take a look. Um, right now it's going to go to Deloitte at yahoo.com and it says there's a pending change. And so after this change takes place, it's going to go to me. 
So right now, I don't want my email going to Deloitte at yahoo.com. I want it going to Lisa Sharp at greenville.edu. So in my mail, I'm going to look new. It's I have already set this up, right? It's pending. So it will send me an email saying, I'm going to please, uh, if this is you, please change it. So I'm changing the admin email because I don't want my people to, I don't want to spam Deloitte. Okay, so now that all of my contact form information is going to Lisa Sharp at greenville.edu. All right, let's test this. All right, so let's go to our site. Let's go to contact. So again, this is a, a plugin that we've done. My name is Lisa. My email is drlisasharp at gmail.com. My subject is test. My message is this is just a test of the contact form plugin. Period. All right, so now let's send it. And it's not going to go to Deloitte, it's going to go to me. Let's flip back to my email. Okay, this might take a minute here. Okay, so this might take a minute, but it is going to go to the email that I have specified under settings. So I am, it's gonna to go to Lisa Sharp at greenville.edu. And so let's just see if it has come through. Not yet, but it will. All right, so the main thing here, the main takeaway from this lesson is Plugins are add functionality to your website, and they come in three flavors. The first flavor of plugin, quote unquote, are is something a plugin that runs in the background, protecting you from spam, helping you back up, um, increasing your search engine optimization, etc. Set flavor number two is something that is visible and creates functionality on your website like this contact form or a booking calendar or social media icons and all of that which actually we have built into our theme the third flavor of plugin are short codes all right we're going to discuss short codes in depth in another lesson but since this plugin generates a short code here's how they look they use a straight bracket, and as you can see, I plugged that into my page, and I got a contact form. Okay, so let's do that again. So a plugin will add that functionality, a visible plugin, added that short code to my web. I added that short code to my website, and I got a contact form. No programming, no nothing. All right. So now let's take that one more step and we discussed the fact that widgets are also plugins and that we can add them as we want to. Okay, so for example, Akismet will display the number of spam comments Akismet has caught, which I honestly don't think is very useful. But let's do this. And this actually may or may not work. An arbitrary text widget is actually a nice, powerful thing to have. And I'm going to make the title Contact Me. And as you can see, I can add media and I get a little uh, page icon here. Yes, I do know that there is a new custom HTML widget. I'm going to add that short code. Okay, so let's take a look at our website. Lo and behold, we have a contact form on the sidebar of our website. So, hopefully I've explained that well to you. The the, remember the main takeaway, plugins add functionality to your website, they come in three flavors, run in the background, add something visible to your website like a contact form, or as short codes. So next we're going to be discussing short codes. 
hope, hope you have enjoyed this lesson and I will talk to you again soon.